And welcome to the Coach's Corner post game show. I am the coach Dick Cox, joined by my fellow broadcaster John Poole today. Welcome to the house. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you having me up here today. Uh, Carolina Panthers 10 and 0 on the season with a very impressive win. This was a Washington Redskins team that everybody said was getting healthy and hot at the, the right time. The Carolina Panthers came in and after a little bit of a sluggish start, totally dismantled this team. Won 44-16. Had they not called the dogs out, they could have put 60 on the board today. Oh, I completely agree with you. Uh, how about the first quarter? The Redskins had a four minute, 30 second possession. Uh, our Panthers had it for 10 minutes, 30 seconds, but the Redskins played them heads up football, 14-14, but as you pointed out when we were chatting, uh, they ran back a field goal. How do, you, how do you account for that? And the uh, Panther defender slipped and the Redskins were able to score on the pass, but still 14-14 at the first quarter. Panthers, though, dominated the entire day. They're difficult to run against, difficult to throw against. That defense is unbelievable, and Cam Newton is definitely MVP material. And, and like you were saying, too, the players, some of the players in the locker room minutes mentioned maybe it was a wake-up call, but again, Panthers scored, then Washington scored on a 56-yard touchdown pass that the Panthers' defensive back slipped on, <laughs> and the safety could not get over in time, so the receiver was wide open. Panthers go down to score, and then we have a 97-yard kickoff return. It's 14-14, like you said, even though the minutes were unbalanced, so. But the big thing today was the Carolina Panther defense just teed off and I don't remember exactly what the total was, but they forced turnover after turnover and had a short field for Cam Newton to operate in. And thus, Cam Newton set a franchise record today with four touchdown passes in the first half. Oh yes, he sure did. And don't forget, Greg Olson actually set a team record today for the most yards, uh, I believe, by a tight end. So what a record setting day just for the Panthers. And you got to consider too, the Panthers back in their early days had a guy named Wesley Walls, who yep. was an, an all-star great tight end though. But Greg Olson is one of the key cogs in this uh, wheel on this team right here that week in and week out, people know that's Cam's favorite receiver. And he still came up with touchdown passes yes, today. I believe he took a blow to the head on a, a penalty that was called on former Gamecock Chris Culver, where he took a shot to the head and they made him come out for a play. And I think that, you know, don't know what his status was, but he did take a pretty good shot. But again, another big day today for Greg Olson. Oh yes. And as Cam Newton said uh, in the press room uh, just a few minutes ago, I think somebody asked him, are you playing to your potential? And he was very quick to say, well, my potential really is with guys like, for instance, Greg, uh, Greg Olson. And if Greg Olson has a great day, Cam Newton is right there with him. They go up as a team, they come down as a team. Uh, wow. I think Ron Rivera got to be one of the one of the best guys out there right now on the field that's, that's a coach. Uh, I'm very impressed. They ran all the executions today that they should have. Defense was flawless, offense was flawless. I, and you look at, and you compare it to the Redskins. I don't know if it was a question of not executing, or maybe they were tired, or maybe they knew they just couldn't beat the Panthers, but it was not, it was apples and oranges. And, and again, you mentioned Ron Rivera. I think that he is a great fit for this franchise because the guy is a class act on and off the field. Just a great guy from the standpoint. And, and I can remember a couple of years ago, people were ready to run him out of town on the rail. That, about two or three, and how short people have memories are on that, but they were after an 0-3 start. There were people wondering if he was going to be gone. Well, he's settled in now. It takes a while to get your system in, your program in, settled in, you know, 10-0 and 0 right now. And he's got to be a candidate candidate for NFL Coach of the Year. Without question. If it were if it were up to me today, we would go ahead and crown him. I will crown him too. I will give him that vote too though. But I'm going to tell you some other things too this, that, that this team, and I will admit, I thought that when they lost Kelvin Benjamin in the preseason, this team has got to trade and go out and get a receiver. They've got to have a receiver to be a Super Bowl caliber team. And there's some people that may say that they still need to do that though. But I am impressed at how these receivers have gotten better. Funches, they're a second round draft choice that they took out of Michigan. Yep. This guy is developing into a player. The last three weeks, he almost has looked at times like a Kelvin Benjamin wearing a different number, 17 instead of 13. But this guy's yep. come on and the rest of the supporting cast 
uh, have come on too that Ted Gann did not drop too many passes today. Uh, he had one that the referee said he dropped, and after further review, they said yeah. he called it for a touchdown. I said they've been watching Ted uh, Gann highlight films too much and thought he dropped it. I would, have, I would have thrown the red flag too. Yes. Yeah. But the receiving core, which was considered subpar coming out of training camp, you can't win with this group, they're proving them wrong. And it's kind of neat what Cam Newton said too, post game, that he took Funches kind of under his wing as a big brother and have tried to nurture him. And Funches has turned out to be the guy they drafted. Oh, and you know, if you're Cam Newton, you've got to be doing the dance. This is the guy, is he the go-to guy? Mm, yeah, I think he's going to turn into that. I think that uh, big playmaker, go-to guy, uh, who better to have as a mentor than him? And, uh, and again, I can't say enough about, and you mentioned it already, this defense. They have played without Johnson, uh, their top defensive end here for several weeks. They hopefully will get him back this week, but they go out and get a guy like Allen from the Minnesota Vikings. They can plug so many players. They played today without Peanut Tillman. They put Ben Wickery in. The biggest thing I have noticed this year, and we knew this coming out of training camp, the depth this team has, when a key player gets hurt, they plug somebody else in, next guy steps up. This defense, again, has got to be one of the best in the league. Don't you think, though, that's probably the key to the Panthers' overall success, is that they've got backups, four backups, four backups. They are strong in every position on this team. Somebody gets hurt that's a starter, somebody else is back there to take over, do just as good a job, yes. I think there are a bunch of starters that are not starting right now. Uh, another guy, a lot of people said, you know, Jonathan Stewart, uh, he can't stay healthy. You know, what are we going to do with Jonathan Stewart? Well, Jonathan Stewart puts together another 100-yard rushing game. It's been a durable back. Uh, again, this week, though, and again, a lot of people thought, you know, trading and, and losing D'Angelo Williams that he's gone now, kind of wondering about the running game, but the Panthers still have not changed their philosophy. They run the football, they throw the ball, the run leads to Cam's passing and all, and Jonathan Stewart very quietly is having a great year too. Yes, sir. I think the running game obviously is not uh, at 100% of Cam's passing game, but I don't think that the, uh, the strategy from, from Ron and the staff is is to rely on the running game. I think their strategy is let's get Cam doing what Cam does best and whatever the supporting role is, that's what we do. Now this game has to be interesting from you because growing up, your father was a huge Redskin mm. fan. Oh, you yeah. know, you probably, you know, we can't sing, but you probably heard Hail to the Redskins many a day though. Hail so how much fun? The Redskins. <laughs> and we talked about the days of Billy Kilmer, Sonny yeah. Jurgensen, and all like that though. But how much fun was you today after growing up, you know, watching him watch the Redskins, I guess, getting to see them play in person today? Oh gosh, I remember going back, uh, oh, oh, when I'm maybe 62, 63, watching it on black and white TV on Sunday. Uh, with the old uh, NFL uh, uh, theme song, uh, it's it's still I got it in my head. But yeah, when the when the Redskins were playing on TV, uh, everybody had uh, had their their Sunday lunch uh, on the TV <laughs> tray, and nobody talked, and everybody watched Sonny Jurgensen and. And uh, that was just the way it was. And I can remember coming over to your house and the Redskins playing and having to lie and say nice things about them, <laughs> even though I was a Packer fan back then and also a Miami Dolphin <laughs> fan. But I made your dad think that I like the Redskins and really. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> I mean, hey, I like the New York Jets. I'm sorry. But after today, they're 5-5. Five and five. What's happening, guys? <laughs> so, well, my two teams played about two weeks ago, being a stockholder of the Green Bay Packers. Hopefully the Pack can get back on track today. But my team right here that we're standing in their stadium is now 10 and 0 and when you go back to last year the end of last year they have won 14 regular season games in a row who to thunk it who would have thunk it and my my wish for next year which of course will become uh, a reality pretty quick is that the carolina panthers get to play the new england new england patriots and i hope they kick their butts and again big ball game coming up and this is kind of a, a treat too because you know, Thanksgiving is always go, stuff your face, watch the Detroit Lions, and watch the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the Panthers are going to Dallas to take on them, the Dallas Cowboys, in the traditional Thanksgiving Day game. That ought to be interesting. Well, I think, uh, yes sir, I think so, and I believe the Panthers will prevail. I think with six games left, I'm going on record now, I think you're gonna see 
the Carolina Panthers go to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to play the Patriots in a remake. Uh, will they win another six games? Odds are that they probably will. But I think it's probably 70, 80 percent that they'll go all the way undefeated. Uh, you, a lot of good teams out there left for these guys to play. A lot of things can happen. The best game plan could go wrong. Somebody could get hurt. Things you just don't think about. Or uh, run back a touchdown. That, that, how do you possibly plan for that? The big thing today, too, was the Panthers win. The Atlanta Falcons got beat by the Colts, who the Panthers beat here several weeks ago. So with six weeks to go in the season, the Panthers now are up four games over the hated Atlanta Falcons. Now, they've still got to play the Falcons twice going down the stretch right here, but have a four-game lead over the Falcons with six to go. And another great thing right now, the, the Panthers are sitting good as far as the possibility of having home playoffs throughout the playoffs, which means the Super Bowl uh, right now at this point today would have to come through Bank of America Stadium. Wouldn't that be something? Wow. So the NFC I Championship game could be right here on this field. Well, count on it because I think it's going to happen. <laughs> and I think that you're right. I think the Panthers are definitely in the playoffs. I think that 10 wins, they usually say 9 and 7 gets you in. 10 and 6 definitely would. But I think this team still got, you know, as, as Ron Rivera was saying in the press conference, your best win is still ahead of you, not behind you. I agree. And with 6 to go, I'm going out on a limb again. I think the guys are going to go all the way undefeated. So, and. To, the, to, our, to our folks listening, thank you very much. I want to say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we have that in another four days. And also to my very good friends at Cherokee Cycles in Greer, South Carolina. We will get that plug in. Tell them where to come to see you there. <laughs> if you want an Indian victory motorcycle or a slingshot. I want the slingshot. I wait for it to Greer. Come by and see us. The important news right now is that I've got the Cam Newton seal of approval approval on my yep. fashion statement today. I, I was wearing, there when you showed. You are that. I was there. I'm wearing my Cam Newton sport coat, which has got the little uh, ticket in it right here that we have fun with. And Cam had to come over and check it out. Told him that I support his wardrobe better than any other reporter here, that I've got about five Cam Newton sport coats. I've got all my Panther colors today. And that got me five knuckles and a big smile as he came over and had to inspect and said, I did make a fashion statement today. Yeah, but I think you saw your Green Bay Packer ring and kind of back on. <laughs> well, I didn't wear it today. I honestly got on my, my coaching rings from the coaching in the state all-star game, the north-south all-star game, and being one for being the all-time winning coach at Ball Springs High School. But it's been a fun day today that the Panthers continue on. I think people come to the stadium now when these games now expect to win. And that's it used to be when they played some of these teams, they came hoping to win. And that's something I always try to sell my teams on. Don't go on the field hoping to win. Go on the field with expectations that you're going to win and you're going to be disappointed if you don't. Think like a winner, be a winner. That's true. So that's going to wrap it up today on a chilly day. My ears are starting to get cold. <laughs> My too. Let's go home. We had to go back and get your jacket, so I'm going to let you put your jacket on in a minute, though. But 44 to 16 is our final from Bank of America. I'm going to echo what John said. Have a very happy Thanksgiving. Think of the things this week that you're thankful for, and hopefully you'll have time to see your family, spend family time, and be thankful for them. Though. He's John Poole. I'm the coach Dick Cox. Have a good Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy holidays. Goodbye.